Have your relationship problems become your new norm? Are you still hoping that your problems will work themselves out? Does it feel sometimes that you are in a relationship by yourself? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then help is here. Andre Pearson is a relationship coach with over 20 years of experience, helping people like you feel better with a new perspective on life. Imagine talking to someone who understands what you're going through. Get started with your free 15-minute consultation and schedule your one-on-one session today because you deserve answers. Welcome to Why Does Love Hurt So Good? with your host, Andre Pearson. Hey everyone, I'm Andre Pearson. Welcome to my podcast, Why Does Love Hurt So Good? Today, I have the pleasure of introducing an entrepreneur, an ordained minister, a published author from the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. Please, everyone, welcome Miss Timmy. How are you doing today, ma'am? I am great. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. It's so nice that you take the moment to come on and chit-chat with me today. I appreciate that. So I want to jump into it because I want everybody to know how wonderful and amazing that you are. Listen, I read in your bio that you do a million things. Please tell us some of the wonderful businesses and things that you do right now. Okay, so currently um, I published my book maybe a year ago. I have a day, a child care center and I have a I do coaching, consulting And I develop trainings for organizations like cultural diversity, customer service training, like organizational development and all of that stuff for organizations. I also have a nonprofit where we give away beautiful gift baskets to those at risk, those in need, those in shelters, hospitals, desperate bad situations, just a little something to give them hope that they can come out of their situation. So you're one of those nice community ladies that take care of millions of things that people just don't know you do. Yes. And I'm also a community leader in my community. I kind of organize events and try to keep things like, you know, nice and neat and clean, you know, in our community. See, how did I know this? (laughs) Well, listen, I hear all the things that you do, and it's wonderful that you're doing these things. Can you share with me a little bit what inspired you to do these things? My own life inspired me. And I truly believe that the trials and tribulations that we go through life, just like the song says, what don't kill you, make you stronger. I have been homeless at one time. I have overcome some physical abuse, some drug abuse, some setbacks, let down, terrible mistakes um, that I have turned them around like 360 degrees with the help of God, some support people and determination. And this has been this has been my motivation in trying to, I guess, make things right, you know, which is um, good. And be an example for myself, my children, and the community that I caused harm to at one time. Okay. Now, with that that said, which kind of leads me to my next question, what actually motivates you to do everything with all that you've been through? What kind of motivates you? I have worked so hard to learn my worth, um, learn my worth, learn the value that I bring to myself and use it to capitalize off of and help other people. I think once you know the value that you bring to the table, it helps you to increase the quality of your life, to want to do better, to want to be better. And and that's kind of my motivation. Okay. Now, I know you mentioned that you had a book out. Tell me a little bit about your book. My book is A Rose Through the Crack. It's a play on words. Okay. A Rose Through the Crack. I feel like I am the rose through the crack. Like I rose through a place where people didn't think I would rise through. Okay. Where you would never see a rose in a crack of cement, right? Correct. And that's my sort of analogy. There's some journaling in my book. There is some little tips about if you're feeling like you're stuck like a mouse on a glue trap in life, you know, like you made mistakes that you can never correct, you know, it just gives you some little insight of how walking in your standing in your truth 
helps you walk in your purpose. That is so true. I know a lot of people today are trying their best to find their footing, find their purpose, find their worth, and actually do the things that they feel they were put here to do. Now, do you feel that in those that you have encountered in your business and in your life in general, have they made a big impact on what it is that you're doing currently? Yes. I feel like those who have encountered, um, I feel like sometimes I can see things in other people that they can't see or don't believe that's in them. All the different experiences I'm talking about from like school experience to rehab experience to, you know, every experience I've had is kind of a compilation of things that I have put together to help and gotcha. inspire other people. And that's what I do in my personal coaching. I am a transformation expert. Okay. And I try to help other people to, I, I build br- blueprints for people to have a roadmap so that they can transform their lives too. And that's always a good thing in communities because we all need those kind of things to help us. So tell me this. I know you have encountered a lot of people and you've done your very best to help those that you work with over time. Do you feel that it's helping a lot more people than hurting people or are they listening? Are they getting it? Are they transformation themselves into different things? How, how does that actually work for them? Well, you have to be ready. The truth hurts. True. You have to be ready. And like in order to kind of fix and address a problem, you have to acknowledge you have one. True. So you got to be ready to really honestly take a good look at that man in the mirror, see what works, what doesn't work, what needs to be fixed, what I can do better, what I didn't even know I can do until I pushed myself a little bit. Like it's not an easy journey, but it's a doable journey. So tell me a little bit about your nonprofit, because people always want to know who is your ideal client. So in your nonprofit, who is your ideal client for you? Okay, so what we do is we make these gift baskets and we're very small, um, like a grassroots nonprofit. We're waiting for our 501c3. So like our first giveaway ever was, I think, last Veterans Day. Okay. And we found we find places that have 20 people or under right now because that's all we can take care of. And we make them for Veterans Day. We made gave 20 veterans okay. gift baskets. And these are veterans that needed services, that were homeless, that needed some uh, mental health and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And we like to find those who are really, really like lost and forgotten. Because the the point is to kind of let them know. Like I think back to my experience, like when I was really down and out, sometimes it feels like you're so alone in that space and nobody knows, nobody understands. And sometimes identification or acknowledgement can be that ray of hope that pulls you right out that space. So we've given to veterans, we've given to at-risk teenagers, we've given to women coming out of incarceration, trying to rebuild their life. Our next giveaway is going to be October 14th. We're going to be giving away baskets to children that are in a shelter who can't get out. Um, And we're going to kind of do a harvest Halloween giveaway, you know, so it'll have things for them to have a little celebration, even though they're in a bad situation. All right. See, that that just lets everybody know that's listening that you are the queen of the neighborhood. You want to make sure everybody's taken care of. I tell you what, this is a very interesting conversation. There's so much more I want to know about you. We're going to learn about that in the second half of our podcast. Well, right now, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to learn more about this young lady and all the things she does. I'm Andre Pearson, and you listen to Why Does the Hurt So Good podcast. We'll be right back. This bra feels easy. Invisible. Feels feminine. Like I could just wear it 24-7. <laughs> One word to describe that. So easy. Colorful. Plushy. Comfortable. That, that's it. That's the word. Comfortable. <laughs> You're listening to Why Does Love Hurt So Good with Andre. Now back to the show. We are back. I'm Andre Pearson, and you're listening to Why Does Love Hurt So Good podcast. For those who are just tuning in, I am talking to Miss Kimmy from 
Philadelphia. She's here with uh, all the wonderful things she does. And we were talking about that in the beginning about all the trials and tribulations. But I want to know a little bit more about her. So, Miss Kimmy, tell me a little bit about your life and how you got to where you are. Like I said, I've overcome many things. My downfalls, once the fog was lifted, once I realized the wreckage of my bad decisions, of, of my past, everything that I had done to harm myself and others around me, I wanted to do better. I okay. no longer, like, it was no longer exciting to me. Like, I wanted to kind of fix things and I wanted to help other people. I had a lot of help along the way. I had a lot of help along the way, especially from my creator that saved me, you know, and, and like I felt it would be only right for me to kind of use that to fix myself and give back. Yeah. And I want to be the best me I can be because I want to lead by example. That's how you do it. Mm -hmm. Now, we were talking before the break about, you know, your education and things that you've gone through concerning that. Tell me a little bit more about that. Okay, so I first went to college in 1983, right out of high school. Um, my parents, my father was a policeman. My mother was a, you know, um, they, you know, were kind of mid-level income. And uh, they wanted so much for me. And they put me in college and I wasn't really ready to go, but I couldn't tell them. You know, and I kind of played around and partied and ended up flunking out and doing what I wanted to do. You know, so after years of destruction, having children, just living my best party life and, you know, <laughs> um, in 2010, just well, just before 2010, I was talking to my children. I have five children. None of them decided to go to college. I was talking about them to them about the benefits of going to school and how like, you know, soon it's going to be you can't even work at McDonald's without at least associate's degree. And like, you don't want to go to school. You guys need to go to school. And, you know, and one of them said to me, Mom, you never went to school. Hmm. And that's when I thought to myself, I didn't. I dropped out and I never went back. And so that prompted me to kind of get myself back in school after being out all that time. And I was fearful and I thought I was too old and I wasn't going to be able to keep up and remember stuff and all that. So I went back to just get an associate's degree because they were right. How can I talk to you about school when I didn't even go? So in 2010, I went to sign up for an associate's degree, ended up signing up for a bachelor's program. I was already doing nursing. I was at um, CNA that turned to an LPN, and I was doing hospice nursing for like 10 years. And I still felt like I wanted to do more. And so I went back to school for a associate's degree, ended up signing up for an accelerated bachelor's program. Finished that in 2016, but in 2015, they approached me and said, hey, you're doing this learning thing so good. Do you want to start your master's classes now? And right. so I did. So when I walked across the stage with my bachelor's degree, um, I was already taking classes for my master's degree. So in 2017, one year later, I had my master's degree. And when I walked across the stage for my master's degree, I was already in school <laughs> for my doctorate. <laughs> there you go. That's how you do it. So just taking a little bit, like I went for associate's degree, but I saw so much more, you know, and I saw that probably in a prior life, I probably was kind of a nerd who loved education, but peer pressure pushed me in another direction. Gotcha. You know, but we come back when we come back. True. And so, yeah, so now I am almost finished. I am just waiting on the approval and the rewrites from my last dissertations. I finished all my coursework with a 4.0 in the doctorate's program, was inducted in the um, National Society for Leadership and Success okay. for my 4.0, been on the president's list the whole time that I was in school. Life is exciting, and I am so excited to to be able to share my journey with people because I want them to know that no matter how bad it was, it doesn't have to be that way today. And that's a wonderful and if I thing. I can turn it around, anybody can. 
<laughs> and that's and that is something that people need to understand. We have bumps in the road, but it doesn't mean we can't continue at some point. And when people do get a chance to fix the rights from wrongs they had years ago, it's always a good thing. So let me ask you a question. With the businesses that you run and the things that you do and where you are currently in your life, what would you say would be one of the biggest challenges that you faced in all that you do? Continuing to push myself. I'm always looking for the next thing. And then I want to wear the cape. I want to help everybody. You know what I mean? Like Superwoman. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes I kind of wear myself out with that. You know, my friends, my family, they they always like to me, just go sit down somewhere, go take a little vacation somewhere, go do something because you're going to wear yourself out like you can't help the whole wide world. And I swear to you, I don't know what has touched my heart through all I've been through, but something has touched my heart where like I just want it. That's just what I want to do. You and know, um, in any way I can, in any way I can. And I know your podcast is about loving and like it begins and ends with you. You know what I mean? You have to find that self-love first before you can give it anywhere. And once I tapped into that, you know, um, I just want to spread it. <laughs> well, that's that, and that's wonderful because you can keep in mind that there's very few people like yourself on the planet. There's a lot of people that come across men and women who want to help and they find it difficult sometimes to help those who are not ready to be helped. And when they come across people, they say, you know what, let me put some time and invest in them. Take a moment, change places and understand where they're coming from so you can better relate to them. And that's what it seems like you do a lot with those that you are fortunate enough to have in your life around you. You kind of inflect that whole situation where you have goodness. You want to spread that goodness. You want to help people when people seem to resonate with it. And this is why you have such a great business at this moment and successful in the things that you do. But it leads me to another question. Okay. Out of all the things that you have accomplished at this point in time, what would you say was your most memorable story of success? When I graduated with my bachelor's degree, I was featured learner. Okay. So they did a blog about me. They put me on their website. They had a whole like story about me at the graduation okay. um, and my journey and everything and how I came about to coming back to school and made that decision. And I was just so proud of that moment. All my children were there. And in fact, after that, one of my children did decide to go back to college. <laughs> All right, now. You know, and I'm still trying to be the example and just, you know, today I just want them to be healthy, happy in whatever they do. But that was a very proud moment for me and to be able to share it with my family and have my children there and, and some people who have supported me through the journey because being an adult learner with the whole family and job and all of that stuff is not easy. True. It's hard for a lot of people today to think that they can actually go back or do things they haven't thought about or do things that they have planned to do, even when they think they've passed their prime. But you're never too old to learn new things. And we know that a lot in our society. So when you get an opportunity to do so and you're able to do it because life is life and life continues to go on. If you're able to accomplish the things that you do, that tells you right then and there that this is someone that is determined to see the end. She sees positive things on the other side. You know what? This has been a great interview. I hope that you have enjoyed yourself. And I know that you're a busy woman. And I know I got to ask you before I get you out of here, please tell everybody that's listening right now how they can get in contact with you and reach you on social media. Okay. So Facebook, we have Kilgore Family Child Care is on Facebook. Everything is with my last name. Okay. Kilgore Family Child Care is on Facebook. Kilgore Enterprises is on Facebook and Kilgore Creations, which is the nonprofit, is on Facebook. We are on Instagram. Kilgore Enterprises is on LinkedIn as well. All right, because I know a lot of people. How about your telephone numbers in case they want to reach out to you directly? Yes, you can reach out to me directly at 855-422-9411. See, this is what I'm talking about. A good conversation with a person that understands that the business that they run and the people that they help is important. Because when you have a story such as yours that you can share with someone and they can relate with you, 
they understand you, and they take it more seriously. I want to tell you, Ms. Tammy, that I've enjoyed our time together. I hope to have you back on later in the year again, as I know some things that's going down the road that you're going to be doing some wonderful things, and we want everybody to know about them. Everyone, be sure to check the description box down below for all this additional information, and be sure to reach out to this young lady in the city of Brotherly Love, because if anyone can get you through the things that you got going through right now, she can do just that. I'm Andre Pearson, and you have been listening to Why Does Love Hurt So Good. Until then, I will see you guys next week. Thank you, Andre.